Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another special episode of Jerseys with Josh. Really glad you joined us. Today, we're chatting once again with friend of the show and fan favorite, collector extraordinaire, Mike. Mike, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for my, having me. My absolute pleasure. And today, you and I are going to talk about photo matching, which yeah. is... Uh, an important part of the hobby for so many of us. It, it really can bring us so much closer to the moments where our jerseys were used in the games and thousands of fans in the stands and the moments where our on-ice heroes are battling. Like, if, And if you haven't seen it yet, uh, I was able to do a live photo match of my Teppo Newman in jersey. I'll, I'll put the link up top for you. But uh, Mike, you are a known expert in photo matching. So Let's talk through this. Maybe like as we're thinking about it, like like a cooking show almost. Like, what do you do yep. when you're looking to Absolutely. make a photo match? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so in case there are uh, other absolutely step one beginners out there, um, what is photo matching and why do we do it? Okay, so basically, imagine the jersey gets out of the factory and it goes to the team and it's brand new and it's lettered with. The player's name on it and it is ready to go brand new day one and every player has a jersey that looks brand new let's say it's the first day of the season so they're all new right they they look alike at first um they look just like the ones in the gift shop uh you wouldn't be able to tell the difference on tv or way up in the nosebleeds at first um but as the games go on um Every player is going to have a different story in that jersey. You know, it's like you're gonna you're gonna take a puck in the stomach. Uh, you're gonna get slashed with the stick, and you're gonna get pinned on the boards. So every jersey is going to be a little unique when all is said and done, and by the time the jersey is not being worn anymore. Photo matching is the art of being able to find a tiny little detail that nobody could possibly forge it uh, because it literally happened on the ice and it's preserved as such. And now it's in your hands as a collector. Um, and why do we do that? Because sometimes certificates of authenticity are never given to you in the first place, or they could be lost in transit, or they could be flat out wrong. And they can be wrong for your benefit, or they can actually be wrong in your detriment. I've seen them go both ways. I've seen a COA for a purported one game special, and it turns out it was worn for a month. Um, and then meanwhile, on the other hand, we talked about my Carey Price jersey way up there. Um, we talked about that one in my previous episode. Um, it nominally has a certificate of, of authenticity that says it was one of three jerseys worn in between February 14, 2019 and April 4, 2019. Now uh, that's what the COA says. Uh, if you can get me a photo match to anything except for April 4, 2019, then I'll love you forever because it's news to me. Um, you know, my theory is that uh, that's a backup jersey that didn't get its fair amount of use, um, but it's photo matched to a game I saw live so it fits in my collection and I'm totally happy to have it. I don't care that the COA makes a big promise and I only got one game out of it. I don't care because I photo matched it to a game I saw live and it fits my collection. If we didn't have photo matching, that would be a very overpriced jersey, pun not intended. <laughs> uh, and I'd probably be looking for a different carry price jersey. So. That, that is what a photo match is, and that's why we do it. Uh, we've, been, we've been throwing out the term photo match a lot in the collector hobby and on your show, which I've seen every episode of. Um, so, Thank you for that. So, you know, I thought it was, um, I, I thought it would be a good thing to, how do you do it? In case somebody's never done it before and they want to get started, how do you do it? Great context. And for those of you who don't remember that, uh, that is Mike's rule. He only collects jerseys that uh, were worn in games that he saw live. So I'll post that link up there for you. Uh, so Mike, what what do you do? You get this jersey. You're all excited, right? The the truck yeah. comes. You have it in your hands. Yeah. How do you yeah. do it? 
Um, so, um, you know, you, um, you got your equipment ready uh, for me, my glasses. <laughs> 2020 far vision, 2020 near vision, but I've got a little bit of an astigmatism. So uh, we put the glasses on when it's time to get down to business. And uh, I like to have at least two screens on me. Um, so if we, have, if we have a live jersey, we're gonna get to this one later. Um, if we have a live jersey, I like to have one screen on hand for my photo matching. Um, but obviously, if, for example, I am looking on the internet uh, at a jersey that I want to buy, that's where you have two screens. So, like, I'll have, um, like, I'll have the jersey I want to buy on the computer or my iPhone or my iPad, and I will have the, uh, I'll have the photo matching attempts on another screen. Um, and that's just personal preference. Uh, some people like to photo match on a computer because their monitor is big and they can see everything and their monitor's fancy. Um, that works for some people. Uh, more often than not, I am personally just on my iPad and I have the official app for Getty Images. We'll talk more about Getty Images. Um, I definitely have Getty Images on the app on my iPhone. And what I like about it on my iPad is I am able to Oops, we're able to select the photo and then I can select anywhere and zoom in specifically to that part. I can move it around. I got more control with my fingers than I do with the mouse. So um, so yeah, you got your um, you got your equipment in order. And um, then the next part is just um, just look at the jersey and see what you got. So let's jump right into it. Um, so this is Andre Markov jersey. Some very, very, very nice wear right there. If I say so myself. Easily visible. Uh, yeah, easily yeah. visible on the white. That is a tip that I'll throw in there. I, I like white jerseys for that reason. They often show the wear so well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I have a lot of white jerseys as a Montreal Canadiens fan who no longer lives in Montreal, so it's more convenient for me to catch them on the road. Um, yeah, works works all sorts of ways. Um, so, you know, we got uh, sleeves. And, uh, oh boy, that's that's a really good rip right there. Are we seeing that? That's, that's oh, a Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that's a whole... Um, yeah, the uh, the left arm, not not as not as much wear evidence, um, but that's that's quite okay. And then you know we've got the back. Um, a cool thing on Andre Markov, it turns out he also has Velcro on the insides. Uh, that's probably not going to be photo matching material, but it's awesome for me as a collector. Um, Second time I've seen this in my collection personally. Uh, Max Petretti has this kind of thing also. Um, so we got that, you know, got the uh, got the fight strap. We got the uh, Canadians tag. And then last but not least, underrated piece of evidence right here. Every team does it a little differently. Um, I speak for my Montreal Canadiens collection. This is my team. I collect it, so I know it best, but every team's going to be a little different, right? So that number one happens to mean that the Canadians claim that it is set one, in this case, white away. Um, and, um, you know, uh, you can't really see just by the jersey uh, that it is the year 2015 2016. Uh, a, certificate, a certificate of authenticity would almost assuredly tell you the year, as does mine. Um, if for whatever reason you did not even have that COA and you didn't know the year, um, I guess the collar is a clue uh, because there are only a certain number of years where uh, the collar looked like this with this, uh, with this texture and the tie down. Um, before the texture, uh, there was no tie down. And then the texture 
went away in favor of like a blue and white stripe. Um, so if you were totally, totally desperate um, without any idea of what year it was, just knowing it was set one, uh, you could narrow it down. But we're going to give you a little bit of a shortcut. I'm gonna tell you it's 2015, 2016. And as I say this, I'm also remembering that uh, the tag would also say that. So I hope you're good at reading upside down, but uh, it's gonna say the year there because that's how the Canadians do it. Um, all right, so, um, so I have my Jersey in my hand. And at this point, I have taken stock in my head of where is the where, um, the where is seemingly more concentrated in his lower belly and on the right arm. Um, but I'm also going to take good stock of every single thread and especially where the threads are cut. Um, you know, all things being equal, I think every collector would rather photo match this stuff or this awesome hole, this, these are going to be more desirable than simply matching the thread where the seamstress cut the, um, cut the numbers and the letters out of the sewing machine. Uh, you know, cause it's, it's all about stories, right? I mean, you would rather a story of hockey action as opposed to seamstress action. Um, but if necessary, uh, if, if you have a thread in just the right spot, or ideally, if you have one piece of evidence here and then another piece of evidence there, and they're not really close to each other, but they're both clicking in the same spots, um, then that's almost as good. I would probably argue just as good most of the time at being able to establish that it was worn on the ice, um, and I'd probably give it a photo match. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take stock of all of that. Um, back also, um, this jersey happens to be already on my Instagram, so you can cheat for the answers. Uh, Instagram <laughs> handle collector0027. Um, I have it on a story highlight reel, this particular jersey. Um, but you know, uh, there's, there, there's 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 a key thread right there uh, in the uh, in the inside of the bottom of the O in Markov. Um, okay, so that's my process. I mean, it's in my hand. I'm determining um, I'm determining where the where is, uh, and we also said it's set one. Um, so as as a Montreal Canadiens collector with a little bit of experience, I would say um, set one. Generally speaking, will be given for the preseason, and then they keep it through the beginning of the year. And most of the time, set one ends in approximately the middle of December. And then set two will take it from there, and it's probably going to last until the middle of February, maybe the end of February, something like that. And then set three is the remainder of the regular season. And if the Canadians make the playoffs, set four is generally the playoffs. Um, assuming no funny business with pandemics or shortened schedules or lockouts or strikes or anything like that. Um, so what do we have? We have a set one of the year 2015-2016 of Andre Markov. Um, and now the goal is to photo match it. Um, you could do it the extremely, extremely hard way and just pick a random picture on Getty Images. As it, this is what I have. Does it match to this particular one? No, don't pick a picture first and then see what you can find. Um, relax your eyes a little bit. And because uh, we said that the wear is on the lower chest and the right arm. So scroll through, um, scroll through Getty Images and if all you can see is Andre Markov's left arm, skip it. You're not gonna get anything. Um, so look for something that is probably gonna have what you're gonna to wanna to zoom in on and then take it from there. And 
And you could do it the other, other hard way and just literally start from the beginning from preseason. No, don't do that. Um, because you're looking at when the Jersey is brand new. Um, and it's got all this stuff on it. This stuff is beautiful. Um, look a little later so that the Jersey has had time to go through some stuff. Um, so in the case of any old set one Jersey, uh, my spidey senses are going, the Jersey probably expires in the middle of December. So let's look in November because November is just a little before December when I think the end might be. Uh, so that's just, that, that's the thought in my head on how to maximize the probability that I can get a photo match. Um, does everything there make sense so far? Yeah, I never thought, I have to admit, I never thought to do it backwards. I always have been one to search the player's name and I do use the date filter, um, <laughs> but I haven't gone backwards. So that's a, that's a great tip, I think, for anybody who's wanting to do that. Yeah, so, so that's how it, so that's pretty much how I would attack any old jersey. Um, this particular jersey is in my collection. And as we've already established, I collect jerseys that I saw live. So I can either remember or I look up from my old Facebook pictures. I figure out the dates of the games I saw. Um, this particular jersey, I saw it twice. Uh, I saw it November 27, 2015. Uh, against the New Jersey Devils and November 20 something or another, 20, 20, 25, something like that against the New York Islanders. Um, so I'm literally gonna Google on Getty Images, Andre Markov, November 27, 2015. That's just for me because it fits my collection. Um, and then sure enough, this is a particular Getty image which has a serial number. There it is. That's a particular serial number, if you can see it. And then we're going to we're going to click it, and I'm just I'm zooming in on this picture. And um, sure enough, I've I've done the work in advance for you. You know, it's like the teacher with the answer key. <laughs> uh, but you know, we look in there. There is a there's a spot in the nine on um, the right arm. Yep, there we go. Yep. Do we see that? Yep. Oh, yeah. And then on the left arm, we have that particular thread at the like southeast corner of the bottom of the seven. And sure enough, those are going to be some photo match points. Look at this. There's there the right is. arm. There's the right arm. And then here's the left arm. So cool. I mean, you know, um, in the absolutely perfect world, I'd be able to match a particular um, piece of game wear to my jersey. Um, but you know what? This will photo match to some other game, quite literally. Um, I'm just happy that this jersey photo matches to a game I saw live. And what we talked about earlier, if you can have a couple of loose threads in totally different spots, it can give you more confidence that this is indeed the jersey because you can make up one thing and you can have your eyes fail you on one thing or you can have a kind of fuzzy picture on one thing. But if you see multiple small things in totally different spots, how do you like one thing on one arm and another thing on another arm? Uh, that, that personally gives me a lot more confidence. So there you have it. That is a jersey that is photo matched to a game I saw live. Uh, so now that we have one game, we already know it's photo matched. But as collectors, we want to see how much of a story we can get. So if you know the game Battleship, you got a hit. <laughs> and then you're just going in lines, man. You are going in lines until you sink the battleship. Um, so yeah, at this point, you can literally go backwards and forwards and see what you get. Um, so what's really cool about this jersey is, and this is why you photo match. Um, most of the time set one expires in like the middle of December, uh, but 
Uh, take my word for it. Go on my Instagram um, highlight of stories. Um, that particular jersey is worn in the middle of January of 2016, which is quite long for a set one. But there it is. It's right there for you. So uh, it matches in December of 2015. It matches uh, very early in January 2016. I forgot its date, but it's against the Philadelphia Flyers. And it matches in October also. So there you have that's, it. That is a jersey. That is a photo match. And um, that's pretty much how I do it. Amazing. And I know, you know, huge, huge kudos to Getty. Their image quality is amazing. Uh, captions can sometimes be a little iffy uh, looking at 2007 and before that, but sometimes you can, you know, get lucky for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that, um, yeah, Getty images are so fruitful for the NHL, um, especially like 2007 to the present. Um, you know, like if, if you want a relatively recent example of Getty being spotty, um, there is a Tomas Placanitz rookie jersey with number 35 as opposed to 14. Uh, it's red set two and it's floating around in the hobby somewhere. Um, it is literally only, it is only photographed in Toronto uh, and they happen to be wearing the red jersey, lucky. Uh, that's <laughs> when the Maple Leafs had their... Um, alternate white jersey with the blue shoulders um so you know they wear that at home it's their alternate so montreal wears the red jersey um so yeah you would think that in 2006 you would have getty images photographing that jersey worn at home in montreal but not so and that was 2006 um obviously before that um it's really a crapshoot. Uh, I mean, you know, in my general personal experience, um, there are photographers in the really, really big cities like Toronto, Montreal, New York, Los Angeles. Um, playoff series also tend to be pretty well photographed. Um, but if you want a random Tuesday in February of the 1995 San Jose Sharks, probably not so much. It's a tough one. Yeah, I got I got extremely lucky with the Andre Savard that I had from 83, 84. Mm -hmm. But even the captions and the photos were a little bit tough. Um, yeah. But luckily, they had a good photographer in Montreal at that time by the name of Denny Brodeur. Yeah, who I think has some kind of a relationship to uh, a player uh, of some kind. Uh, yeah, you know, you might have heard of him. Uh, maybe Chris Lipka's heard of him also. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Denis Brodeur has a son named Martin Brodeur. And um, that is the very, very, very goaltender who uh, has one shutout to his name as a St. Louis Blue and a trillion other shutouts and Stanley Cups and Vesna trophies as a New <laughs> Jersey Devil. Yeah, same guy. So funny. So funny. So Getty so, is a great resource. Definitely recommend going there. Mike, yes. let's say you've got the jersey. No luck on Getty. Where do you go next? Okay. So Getty is generally great for the NHL, and they will randomly have some AHL games sometimes also. Um, if, if I've struck out on Getty, um, if I happen to have an AHL jersey, uh, this is a very specific sidebar. Um, but effective 2016, thereabout, um, most, if not all, AHL teams, this is the American Hockey League, one step below the NHL, uh, they have Flickr pages. That's F L I C K R, no E in Flickr.com. Um, and the home team photographs every game and they have every game in their own album. So if you have AHL, uh, go to that, um, go to Flickr, um, but remember who the home team is. So like I have a pair of photo matched gloves from Eric Jelena of the Laval Rocket. Um, I have to cross-reference the Laval Rocket schedule, uh, figure out all of the home teams uh, eliminate the games where he was a healthy scratch and then go to those teams flickers. So you do your research 
and you figure out that Eric Shalana played some home games, uh, excuse me, he played some away games for the Laval Rocket. Uh, he was present in Syracuse one time, and he was present in Springfield one time, and he was, um, he was present in Rochester and Hartford. You're going to go to those specific teams' Flickr accounts. Um, so you would Google that, like Springfield Thunderbirds Flickr. And you got there, you find the game, you see what you can find. Uh, Great advice. Eric Jelena gloves are also on my Instagram. Every, everything I talk <laughs> about is on my Instagram. Uh, let's, let's just get that out of the way. Um, so that, that was an AHL detour. Let's get out of the AHL. Let's go back to the NHL. Um, if, for, if for a tragic reason, you're not finding what you need on Getty, uh, then my next step would be to um, would be to search the trading cards. Um, and what I don't love about trading cards is it's really, really small. Uh, and the resolution cannot possibly be that good. I mean, I wish I could have a big Getty image of a trading card on my monitor. Uh, but if we're looking at trading cards, we're looking at a tiny little thing, not that big. Um, but I don't really have too many trading cards. So I'm looking on eBay for all the trade. eBay has literally all the trading cards. Uh, so you go on eBay, you're probably going to find trading cards, but then you have to put up with their upload quality of the trading card that was small and the photo wasn't super great in the first place. Um, I mean, if we're looking at trading cards for photo matching, it's a real needle in a haystack situation, um, but it is what it is. So if you don't have Getty images, you have to exhaust all your resources. Um, now for trading cards, um, the pictures are going to be from last year. So for example, I have my Yaroslav Shvacek jersey. Uh, it was worn in the 2010-2011 season, uh, which means for the addition of trading cards 2011-12, they are going to use last year's pictures. Um, so you're going to want to um, you're going to want to Google search appropriately, or in this case, you're going to want to eBay search for training cards appropriately. Um, yeah. Um, another thing I don't love about trading cards, obviously, is it's literally one picture, right? Sometimes two. You really have to get lucky. Um, just as an exercise, I Googled Andre Markov's trading cards of the 2016-17 run on eBay. And all of the trading cards have him in a red jersey. I have a white jersey. <laughs> so there's, there's zero photo match there. Um, but the good news is if you are able to match it to a trading card, you buy the trading card. And who cares how cheap it is? It could be a common card. Like You can have a photo match in your hand for like five bucks shipping included. And you can show your friends who come over and see your stuff. And it's right there. Like, God bless Getty Images, but they charge $175 a license. Um, I'm probably not going to buy that. I'm going to notate its existence. I'm going to record serial numbers of Getty Images and write it on a piece of paper and paperclip it to my certificate of authenticity because I did my homework. But I'm probably not buying a Getty license in real life. If I can find a photo match to a trading card, I will absolutely spend $5, including the shipping on it. Fair. And I, you, you touched on a great point. We're about to get to the final thread, which is Googling. More on that in a moment. There's mm -hmm. another site you mentioned in passing before called Alamy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that is another website. Um, it exists, A-L-A-M-Y. Um, you know, it, it's, um, in my personal opinion, it's, um, it's not as intuitive as Getty Images, um, but the whole point of this exercise is 
what do you do if you can't find it on Getty Images? Getty Images is my personal favorite. It's my first stop all the time. Uh, but if you don't have any luck on Getty Images, you have to try everything. So Olami is another website that does exist. And um, I, I have occasionally been able to find something on Olami that I was not able to find on Getty Images. Um, there is a, uh, there's a collector of Columbus Blue Jacket stuff uh, who asked me if, he, if I could help him photo match a Robert Cron jersey. And um, sure enough, I was able to find it on Olami, but it was not on Getty. Um, the photo match is uh, Cron is spelled K-R-O-N. And there's one key thread sticking up in the northwest corner of the R in Cron. And it's right there. It's as clear as day. Um, I looked at other R's in the era of Columbus Blue Jackets to make sure I wasn't looking at a serif. I was not looking at a serif. That was a thread in just the right spot. Um, so it was good enough for him. It was good enough for me. And that is one isolated success story of photo match by Olami, not Getty. Awesome. Well, we'll take it. And and that moves us into Google, uh, my last resort. I yes, have a absolutely. fun story. There was a little while back, some really, really cool Dave Anderchuk um, Buffalo Sabres jerseys. Of course, he was drafted by the Sabres. And uh, the, these pair of jerseys were listed on uh, Migre's website, both white and blue from the early 80s. Uh, but it was unique in that uh, the number was not his normal number. It was uh, 30, I believe, uh, which is, you know, strange, uh, but it made it a little bit of a fun adventure. I, I didn't purchase the jerseys. I, I don't own them today, um, but I thought, wouldn't it be cool? And so I spent some time really kind of looking um, and I was able to, using Google, find a photo of him uh, that was on Pinterest of him mm -hmm. wearing the jersey at the draft on draft day, which was really cool and so when a, a gentleman posted that he had bought them i i shared that on facebook yeah. with him in the sabers group because i just thought it was really cool yeah yeah i mean um google is a good last resort um because it can have anything and everything um you know it can have um it can have it can have a picture of a media guide that somebody scanned in from a long time ago uh you could have um you can have PDFs and JPEGs of the team yearbook. Do teams even have yearbooks anymore? I don't, I don't know. know. I, maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if somebody lovingly took the time to upload it to the internet and gave it good metadata, um, it might show up on Google. Uh, that is why you do it. Um, one time I had a hilarious success story of a... Uh, a fantastic collector who is a, he's a Detroit Red Wings fan who lives in almost Pittsburgh, West Virginia. Um, and he showed a, that one, um, he showed this particular training camp jersey and he just, he personally loves this style of that training camp jersey. And he also loves all the puck marks on it. It's worn by a goalie. Uh, so, you know, he just thought it was, a cool, cheap, great looking thing. I photo match that. <laughs> um, and how did I do that? Um, we're sharing the screen right now. It's some guy by the name of Jake Patterson. So I Google image searched his name and there he is in training camp. And that is the URL of the particular um, website, somebody had a blog and took all the pictures because they were at training camp. And um, they um, they gave me the information that made it possible for me to find it on the internet. So yeah, you can photo match pretty much anything, even a training camp jersey of a nobody who didn't really have a professional career in hockey. What a cool story. Uh, so glad you found that. Uh, we'll share yeah, a couple more do. items as we go. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so let's talk about uh, what other things shouldn't we miss while we're on this topic? Um, boy, I mean, you know, um, 
I don't know. Uh, I think we actually, I think we covered uh, loose threads sometimes yeah. work. Um, yeah, really and that fun. conclusive matches too um, are sometimes when you have two two pieces of wear at the same time. Um, yeah, so I mean, you know, uh, conclusive. You know, I mean, I think that's going to be uh, I think that's going to be largely subjective, but sometimes you can get a consensus. Um, I know for a fact that my gray wants my gray wants two pieces of evidence that are kind of far away enough from each other. Uh, to call it a conclusive match. Um, but, you know, in, in my book, personally, if the wear is, if the wear is just so unique enough and obvious enough, uh, then, you know, depending on who you ask, you might get a conclusive photo match on just one particular mark. Um, you know, I guess then we can go into the really unscientific term of sketchy photo matches you know <laughs> where you're really really zooming in so much that you start to see the pixels on getty before you uh before you know like you see the pixels because you can't see threads anymore uh you know i mean you know you you can have a sketchy photo match i guess um but you know um yeah i, I think that um i don't know i think that pretty much covers it i mean uh and, and you can photo match pretty much anything really. I mean, you know, this is a Jersey show. So we're going to talk about jerseys and uh, jerseys are great to photo match because, you know, like they're, they're big, right? So you can have, you can have a match on the front, the back, right arm, left arm, whatever. Um, and you could have all sorts of ways that they're photo matched, right? I mean, is it a loose thread? Is it a stick? Is it a puck? Is it a board burn? Um, and also, they have a little bit of shelf life and there generally aren't too many of them, right? So like, um, you know, there are the exceptions. Some players literally have one jersey per period. Um, you have your occasional one game specials, mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, you have set one, set two, set three. So they're used until they're not being used anymore. Uh, and they, but they hold on to all the wear that they have up until the jerseys are retired. Um, would you say would you say jerseys are the easiest among all of the like let's say we want to get crazy, right? You've got jerseys and helmets and gloves and sticks and pucks and all kinds of things. Yeah. Would you I mean, say they, they're among the easier easier ones? I'm tempted to say that a jersey is going to be an easier thing. Um, you know, because you know fabrics give a little bit, you know, like um Okay, so gloves. Um, gloves are also made of fabric and they can have some thread pulls and they can have some puck marks. Um, but um, but they don't they they won't have as consistent wear as a jersey does, right? I mean, some players have one pair of gloves per period, uh, or they'll have glove set A, glove set B, and they change it at the uh, midpoint of the second period, some like that. Um, sometimes you'll have some gloves that are worn consistently for a week or two, and then the player thinks that the shelf life is over, so they got a new set. I mean, every player is unique. Um, so, I mean, boy, I guess photo matching is easy unless it isn't. Um, You've had some good success with gloves. Um, you know, I mean, we're we're showing uh, we're showing arguably the pride and joy of my collection here. This is uh, a pair of Joel Edmondson gloves from the 2021 playoffs, the run to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, I mean, these are these are so beautiful to me. Like, look at just look at all this wear. Um, his left his left index finger has a blood spot, like he was checking for a high stick or something like that. Um, but if you want to illustrate uh, how irregular a photo match on a pair of gloves can be, um, we can we can look through these posts right here. Um, I have these gloves matched to one home game in the first round against Toronto, one away game in Toronto, one home game against Winnipeg in the next round, 
one away game in Winnipeg. Um, I have one away game in Vegas, which just happens to be uh, Joel Edmondson celebrating his assist on the Yoel Armia goal, which I own that goal puck and it's photo match. And we talked about it last time. So these gloves match one particular game in Vegas. They match to game six, the Saint-Jean-Baptiste game, uh, where they uh, punched their ticket to the Stanley Cup finals. It's photo match to some action at that game six. It's photo match to the team celebrating after Arturi Wakanen scored the overtime game winning goal. And then it's matched to every single Stanley Cup final game in Tampa Bay. I do not yet have photo matches to Stanley Cup final games in Montreal, and I don't have matches to every single game in the playoffs. Um, so that irregularity in glove photo matching, um, it, it illustrates why and how it's harder than a jersey most of the time. Um, but when you get all those matches, it's one of the most rewarding feelings I get as a collector who depends on photo matches. I mean, that's Stanley Cup final action right there. Man. <laughs> I love that. That's so cool. Um, and let's talk helmets while we're on the subject of different kinds sure. of uh, different kinds okay. of wear. So, um, so how, how so, hard would you say helmets are? Um, the good news about helmets is uh, that helmets generally get assigned one per color per player, right? So if you are on the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, they have a blue helmet uh, and they'll occasionally change the shape of the Maple Leaf if it's their, uh, if it's their alternate jersey, right? Uh, and they have a white helmet. And that's generally going to be all they get. Um, one helmet per color per year. And compare and contrast that with the Colorado Avalanche. Um, they have a white helmet. They used to have a black helmet, but now it's blue. And then they have a dark blue. Uh, that's their current alternate with the, um, with the Navy jersey, white shoulders, and uh, the logo they borrowed from the Colorado Hockey Rockies. One helmet per color per year. Um, so that's the good news. Um, and the really, really good news is if, um, if you have a decal smudge, as we have here on the Jake Evans rookie year 2020, um, that's going to be some really, really, really good evidence. Um, and, you know, if you're lucky, you're able to get some scratches on the helmet that you can photo match. Um, but the bad news I would say about helmets are uh, it's rigid plastic. So in a way that gloves and jerseys uh, can really show their wear and have some thread pulls, like there's, there are no threads on a plastic helmet. So it's, it's just, it's different. Uh, and they, they present their own challenges. Um, so yeah, this particular Jake Evans helmet, it's actually a really fun story for me personally. Um, it was sold by the Canadians at auction as a playoffs 2020 helmet. Um, so I started backwards as I do. Um, this is, this is Bauer. Um, in the final series that the Canadians played that year, this was 2020, this was the pandemic bubble. Um, they got eliminated against the Philadelphia Flyers. And in the Flyers series, he wears a blue CCM helmet um, and he wears a white Bauer helmet in games one and two of those series. Uh, so that's why you start backwards, uh, in my opinion. You know, you're able to uh, you're able to figure out the logical end of it. So this jersey was definitely not worn against the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, it was, however, uh, worn and ultimately retired in the qualifying series against Pittsburgh, uh, where he took a gigantic hit in game three, and he literally did not play in game four. Um, funny enough, uh, that photo match that you're seeing right there, the uh, 
the one, two, six, four, one, nine, two, one, four, one. Uh, Jake Evans is not in the caption. Um, this is something I forgot to talk about on Getty Images. Um, you go on to Getty Images, you're sometimes able to click on a link of the events worth of pictures. So that's what I did that time. I clicked the link of the event and I looked at every single picture and there he is. There's Jake Evans at the end of the bench. He's not in the caption, um, but that photo match is as good as anything. Um, Love it. Yeah. So there he is in the playoffs. And then me looking backwards, I thought to myself, well, this is Jake Evans we're talking about here. He made his debut in the year 2020. Uh, and I bet you they did not give him a new helmet, you know, until he switched brands, right? He obviously gets a new helmet when he switches brands. Um, but I bet you that that Bauer helmet lasted as long as it could have. Um, so sure enough, I went to his NHL debut which happens to be at home. It happens to have him wearing a blue helmet. It just so happens to have this particular blue Bauer helmet. Uh, there is a particular scratch on the um, on his right side, um, and it shows up on the Instagram. Uh, so this helmet is, it was sold as 2020 playoffs. That is true, but this helmet is also his NHL debut helmet. And what happens in between his NHL debut, which happens to be a home game, and the playoffs? What's in between that? His first goal, which just so happens to be a home game also. Um, pictures are a little fuzzy on Getty Images, um, but I generally assume the middle. Like the, um, like the photo matches are otherwise really, really clear for pretty much every other home game. Uh, so the odds that... It's a different blue power helmet uh, for his first NHL goal, as opposed to the debut in every other game. Those are very low odds. Uh, so this helmet, NHL debut, I'm going to assume his first NHL goal. And literally every time you see him wearing a Bauer helmet in his rookie season in the year, in the calendar year 2020, because he made his debut in February 2020. February 2020, through the pandemic. And that's my helmet. Unbelievable. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a surprise here. Uh, we didn't we didn't plan for this, but uh, let's talk sticks. Here's okay. One. Tell me about photo matching a stick, Mike. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go off camera a little bit so that um, I can show it for the camera. Um, so, you know, what I was saying earlier of uh, take stock of where the where the where is and just focus your eyes um, as you search on that kind of stuff. Um, so we're going to show we're going to show my stick in front of the camera and uh, we see a lot of marks on the forehand. Tyra Toffoli is a righty shot. Um, so we have a few marks here on the forehand at about the heel and also where I would say heel meets the bottom of the shaft. Um, and these are some pretty distinct markings. Um, and now Tyra Toffoli, I loved the guy. I really miss him. He really didn't have too many games in a Montreal Canadiens uniform. Um, so you start the photo matching and you relax your eyes uh, so that you're only letting yourself zoom in on pictures where you see the forehand of his stick. Um, and I got one. Um, I probably found the March 15, 2021 match first. Um, and then I start playing battleship with it. You know, like I, uh, I, I see if I can't get something immediately before or immediately after. Um, sticks are a very special challenge um, because players these days go through a lot of sticks and they all seem to look alike. Uh, this is what we call style match. Um, if from far away, they look the same, but you really need to put your glasses on and look up close, 
That's the difference between a style match and a photo match. Um, and players, players do not generally experiment with new stuff during the year. So like, this is their style of stick. You know, it's like, if they're feeling crazy, they'll switch from white tape to black tape because uh, <laughs> players are creatures that have it. So we have so many sticks in the universe that all kind of look the same. And also sticks generally don't get used too often. Um, right, I mean, um, so many things can happen to a stick. A stick can fracture in the middle of a game and they throw it away. Um, a stick can be deemed unlucky because they hit a post and they airmailed a breakaway. Um, a stick can be given away to a cute fan who was wearing his jersey. Um, literally anything can happen to a stick. Um, but shelf lives are generally on the short side in my experience, uh, which makes this stick really, really, really special because I was able to photo match it to two games. They happen to be right next to each other as I would expect. Um, by further luck of the draw, they're both in Winnipeg, March 15 and March 17 of 2021. Um, Toffoli has three goals and one assist between those games. Um, but I cannot attribute this stick to any of those points. Um, it would be awesome if I could say that this Toffoli stick is responsible for a goal. Uh, I have two sticks that I can conclusively say are responsible for a goal. Those are awesome, um, but I'm in it for the photo matches. So this Tyler Toffoli stick, photo match to two separate games. Love it. It's on the wall. And I don't really care that there are no goals in it. It's photo matched and it's photo matched to two games. So that's just a cherry on top. That's perfect. Uh, which takes us to the hardest thing that we have to photo match. And those are pucks. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you think, you think a puck is the toughest thing to photo match. Um, I got a story for you. One time I photo matched a pair of shin guards. <laughs> I, that's uh yeah that's a tough one I, I i i kid you not um but i saw a pair of shea weber shin guards uh for sale by somebody and they had a particular scratch and i was able to photo match those shin guards to his locker stall in the all-star game that took place in nashville that's incredible i wouldn't uh i'm not surprised you are uh, like the photo I, matching I, expert. I, I was i was surprised i was surprised i could find it <laughs> um, I mean, you know, shin guards are generally, uh, covered by a hockey sock, so uh, you're not going to see them too often. Um, but that's gotta be the most unlikely thing I photo matched in my life. Um, but you know, um, the, the hard thing about pucks is they're not often photographed, uh, because the photographers are focusing on the players and the game action most of the time. So uh, it's actually kind of rareish to have a puck even in the picture. Um, and if the puck is in the picture, it's so small and it's mostly black. So it's quite hard to see those special characteristics. And then if a puck does have a special characteristic, they have two sides and an edge. This is a Philip Dano goal in my collection. It's in the Vegas building, uh, and it's dated October 31, 2019. This is a beautiful piece of wear. It looks awesome on my wall in my collection. Um, but when you go to a Getty image search and you see the photo where Philip Deneau is shooting this puck and it's gonna eventually go in the net, obviously we see the wrong side of the puck. Of course, so, of course. Yeah. So I cannot say that this puck is photo matched. It is merely photographed in a Getty image. Mm. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> still pretty special. And I like the, uh, I like the wear that's visible on it. That's still pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so, you know, a photo matched puck is um, pretty rare. Um, but I have a few that are photo matched and uh, th those are, those are pretty awesome.
That's that's incredibly cool. Well, uh, thank you for walking through all of that um, with us. And uh, Mike and I heard from a fan by the name of Matt Pico Piello, uh, and he uh, he wrote a comment on the video with uh, Chris Lipka, and I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen it already. But he has uh, Jacob Josephson Red Set One home jersey from 2013-14 that he's having trouble phono matching and so mike and i came up with the idea let's see if we can help him live on the video here mike what do you say absolutely yeah so um hi matt um welcome to the hobby and thank you for leaving a youtube comment um i know josh appreciates it and um and as a photo match guru um I'm happy to hear from you too. So um, we can't really, really see it unless we can see your jersey. Do we have pictures of this jersey? We do. He sent us some. Wow. Okay. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Wonderful. Fire. So, I'm gonna. Zoop. They're uh, they're in your email now. And, all right. Uh, let's see what okay. we can do. Now all you're right. gonna need so, two devices, right? Because. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's no problem, no problem. Uh, I've got a computer, I've got an iPad, and I've got an iPhone, so we're covered. Um, okay, Matt, um, so this is a Jacob Josephson jersey. It is red, and it is set one, and it's the New Jersey Devils. And uh, can you remind me the year again, please? This is a 1314. Okay, so it's a red set one. So personally, I'm going to be thinking to myself, if it matches, when it matches. When it matches, it'll probably be November 2013 because you want to give your jersey time to get its wear. If it's light wear, we tried. Um, but if it's heavier wear, you should be able to see it. And I would bet that you would see it in November. And um, hey, Josh, it's your show. And uh, you seem to be a big fan of my gray. Um, have we talked about population reports? No, we gray? haven't. Great. Point, okay, Mike, let's have it. Yes. yes, let's talk about the migrate population report. Um, Google exactly that. Google search migrate population report 2013 2014. The migrate population report is chock full of really valuable information. And uh, Matt, you're lucky because the doubles work with migrate. So the population report is going to detail for every team that they're a client of, uh, they're going to have the schedule. What is set one? What is set two? What is set three? What are the dates of all the one game specials? Um, you know, for example, the Devils played in the Hockey Hall of Fame game in Toronto, brand new jersey, put a patch on it, one game special. So it will have those schedules and it will also say which serial number of a jersey um, was worn by which particular player. So we have Jacob Josephson, red home set one for the New Jersey Devils of 2013-2014. Find that population report. It's a Microsoft Excel document and then control F or uh, command F if you have a Mac. Uh, do the find search uh, of Jacob Josephson. Uh, spell his name right. Got to spell his name right. Otherwise, you won't find it. Uh, but uh, do a control F search on Josephson, and we will be able to figure out what jersey it is. Um, so, right, it has a serial number. Uh, what's that serial number he's got? Uh, so, the serial number on this one, let me pull it back up. There it is, is k zero seven six six three okay yeah so um you know we're, we're not going to photo match that because uh the tag is on the inside but you know just to know just to know what we're dealing with here so that's his number um and it's a red set one and um we have the population report and um for the devils uh it the set one expires in December, like early December. I want to say December 6, December 10, something like that. Um, since you have it in the population report, since you have the dates, that's great. If you didn't have the dates, set one, think to yourself, it's kind of in the early-ish part of the season. That's why I said 
November. So with all of those thoughts in my head, I am quite simply just going to uh, Getty Image Search, Jacob Joseph Sun. I'm going to spell his name right. <laughs> November 2013. November 2013, right? That's right. Okay. And then we are going to filter, um, filter, sort by newest. So here in November 2013, we're hypothetically going to get, you know, November 30, if he played that game. Um, so, right, we go in order like that. Uh, so this is, this is what my app looks like. Jacob Josephson, November 2013. And this picture has potential. Let me click it, and I'm going to zoom in on it. Beautiful. I'm going to pull this up, too. Here's a shot of some wear. Actually, let okay. me, I'll let you, I'll let you show me what you got. Okay. So, yeah. So um, what I'm looking at is um, this is, this, this happens to be a very, very clear picture. And I want to zoom in. That white thread has a lot of potential to me. Ooh, let me see if I can get the front of the Jersey here. That definitely does. Okay, so let me share my screen one more time. I'm gonna zoom in. Okay. What do we see? Scrolling up. All right, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. what's that? Look at that. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. We, did like not, that we did not do this in advance. That is amazing. There you go, Matt. Like that. Uh, so ah. that is that is uh, Getty Image Search uh, number um, four five two six 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 seven nine three, and it happens to be dated November 30, 2013. Uh, this was a home game with the Buffalo Sabers in the building. Uh, now, let's say you um, let's say you want more confirmation about that one particular thread. Just keep scrolling backwards the other way, you know, because it's relatively possible that that thread is a fluke. But if you can see it again on another date, uh, you're probably going to have a lot more confidence. So I'm just going to very, very blindly uh, scroll this way so that I got the beginning of the month, right? Um, and if I if I happen to find it any earlier, um, if I happen to find the exact same thread in the same exact spot in a totally different game, um, I'm going to have more confidence in that particular photo match. Um, so yeah, I am. I'm looking at this live, and yeah, I hear you. I would love to get that match on uh, the wear of the right arm, uh, that, that would be great. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, you have what you have. Um, so you take what you can get and we're only going to take what I can get right now because we're <laughs> doing this live. Um, but you know, you, um, you take what you get from me right now. And then Matt, uh, if you have enough confidence in that, match on the on the uh, on the longish thread from November 30th 2013 uh you can you can keep looking for your other good stuff around there um Beauty. way so, to go Mike Matt yeah. you just got photo matched live on jerseys with Josh that is definitely a first um, Absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that right arm um and I'm gonna do some more homework to see if I can get that particular piece uh because Every collector would rather photo match to some actual wear on the jersey as opposed to just a thread. Um, and uh, if I'm able to go back and find that particular thread one more time, um, I'll do so. Um, but yeah, that is that's a photo match. That's live. So Matt, you're welcome. And. Um, Pay it forward, do something good.
Amazing. Are you, uh, uh, Mike, are you cool if others in the hobby sort of reach out to you? I know it can, it can be very time consuming. Um, it, it, do you, do you, uh, are you cool with photo that? Matching, photo matching is super rewarding, but sometimes it can be time consuming. Um, so if you need help, uh, you can absolutely reach out to me on Instagram. I am Instagram at collector 0027. Um, and yeah, you can, um, you can reach out to me for questions. Um, if I'm able to get a photo match, um, this is a freebie because it makes for good television on YouTube. Um, but generally, if I'm able to find a match for somebody else, um, I'm going to ask for some basic beer money, very, <laughs> very nominal rates. Um, now, I have to charge a little bit because my time is worth a little something. Um, if I if I don't charge anybody, then I'm going to photo match for literally everybody and their mommy <laughs> if they don't ask because uh, I love this stuff. Uh, so if I find something good for you, throw me a little beer money, throw me a little chump change. Um, but yes, absolutely. Um, my DMs are open. Awesome. For Amazing. No, it's all good in the hobby for sure. Um, so Mike, coming away from this really fun episode, uh, what would you say are your top five tips for those looking to, uh, to photo match or thinking about photo matching? Okay, sure. So, um, so, um, so tip number one, um, as you've said before on, uh, previous episodes of jerseys with Josh, um, some jerseys have a COA uh, and some collectors love them. Uh, some collectors have absolutely no use for them. Um, I personally fall somewhere in between. Um, if you do have a certificate of authenticity uh, that has dates of use, it's a good starting point. Um, you know, like a starting point means you're going to start somewhere in your Google search or your Getty image search. Um, so go ahead and start there. Um, it doesn't mean that it's 100% correct, those dates, um, but it's a perfectly fine spot to start your search. Um, and as we said earlier, um, there's, a, there's an infamous, um, allegedly one game set from the Montreal Canadiens. Um, its date was February 13, 2021, and it was given away by Club 1909, which is like the... Uh, like the fan engagement portal, fan club thing. Um, you think it's just a one game special, um, but I've personally matched four or five of those jerseys from that date. And uh, they work as late as March 17. Um, so check your dates, uh, use the dates on the COA to start somewhere, um, but always be ready to have them double checked. Um, I have a story uh, that we talked about last, episode I did with you, uh, where um, the 20, 2017-2018 away set two and away set three are shuffled like a deck of cards. Um, so, you know, that is a piece of team-specific knowledge that I have because I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan and collector, and I talk with fellow Montreal Canadiens collectors. That's something we know. Um, so maybe your team has something like that also, uh, a notoriously bad set that you just have to do your own homework on. So step one, start with the COA and see if it can't be worth something to you. Um, uh, um, tip number two, I would say, if you do not have dates on your certificate of authenticity, but you know your team's general calendar. So in the case of the Montreal Canadiens, set one, probably going to get retired in the beginning or the middle of December, so on and so forth. Or by the way, if you are a Migray fan, like Devils, Capitals, Flyers, Nashville Predators, Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, you can have a population report and use the calendar to your advantage. Um, jerseys only get dirtier. They only get more worn. Um, they're not going to have less wear. So if the set expires in the middle of December, 
um, you can zoom in on the beginning of December or the later part of November. Uh, you're using the calendar to your advantage in order to find a photo match more efficiently. Did, did all of that make sense? 100%, um, yep. Right, because if you, if you have a very dirty jersey on your hands and you start on opening night, you're going to get frustrated. You're looking at a brand new jersey um, where you have all the wear in the way. Um, so start backwards. Um, uh, tip number three, if you are on Getty Images and there is an album for the game, like if, it's own, if it is its own self-contained event, um, look through all the pictures of that event. Um, as we saw in, um, in the case of my Jake Evans helmet, uh, Jake Evans, Jake Evans's blue Bauer helmet is photo matched in the pandemic bubble 2020 action game three against the Pittsburgh Penguins, because he is very clearly pictured at the end of the bench. Um, but the caption doesn't talk about him. Um, so use those specific events to your advantage. Um, when we're only talking about just 100 pictures, just zoom in on it. You know, like if, if you need a photo match to that date, open up the whole folder and look at all the pictures. Because um, he doesn't need to be in the caption to be in the picture. If he's in the picture, you have a chance to photo match it. Um, tip number four, Make sure you spell your search terms correctly. Might be obvious, but I've had some clumsy fingers before. Uh, so spell everything correctly, um, but also know that the uh, that the computers can be weird and they can make mistakes sometimes. It like, can uh, also, Mike. It can also auto correct. Sorry for interrupting. It oh, also auto correct. Yeah. Sometimes I find I search a player's name and I spell it correctly and I hit enter. And it just like changes it to something else and I have to do it again. And it doesn't, it does it the way that I want the second time, yes. but the first time it'll pick up something more popular and just automatically yes. change. It. Yes, that is, that is, that is a fantastic point. I would not have thought of that. Um, but yes, uh, be, be, be aware of your phone auto correcting for you when it shouldn't have. Um, but you know, other imperfections are, um, we're going to pick on the New York Rangers a little bit. Uh, they have a player by the name of K. Andre Miller, who spells his name K apostrophe A N D R E. I remember one time looking through the Getty images and his name was spelled K equal sign Andre. Uh, so um, just know that the computers will mess up a little bit and, um, you know, get a little creative with your searching so you know like maybe uh maybe just search miller 79 new york rangers or if we want to pick on more new york rangers mm -hmm. artemi panarin um he prefers that his name be spelled um in english letters as opposed to cyrillic he likes his name spelled a-r-t-e-m-i-y um but he only started insisting on the y relatively recently and sometimes they spell his name wrong. They forget the Y at the end of our 10 me. Um, so just know that computers are imperfect because they're only as good as the human beings that enter in the data in the first place. So, you know, check our Temi with the Y, check our Temi without the Y, or just focus on Panarin, uh, which is a little less commonly misspelled, P-A-N-A-R-I-N. Um, and then of course, you know, make sure you spell your months correctly. I've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, search November, search February, you know, it's like February, F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y, uh, spell everything correctly. Um, uh, and then the last tip I want to leave for everybody is look in the right places. Um, Getty is severely limited in the modern American Hockey League, but every once in a while you will get lucky for the AHL in Getty. And similarly, Getty is really hit or miss in the old time NHL. Um, you got what you get, and sometimes the captions are terrible. Uh, I, I don't know how many times I've seen a caption 
Saku Koivu, 2003-2004 season. Wow, thanks. Um, <laughs> not giving me a lot of information there. Uh, if you can photo match it to that, it's like this random picture is a photo match. Don't know when it is or where, but it's a picture. Um, so, um, so Getty is great for the modern day NHL. It can be hit or miss in the older times and it's really limited in the AHL. Um, but Flickr is going to fill in a lot of gaps uh, in the American Hockey League, for example. Um, if, it, if, if you're looking for an AHL game that is not on Getty, you're probably going on Flickr. Um, and then we talked earlier about trading cards. Uh, the trading cards are going to use last year's pictures for the most part. Um, I have heard of modern trading card lines that are digital only. Um, and the point of those trading cards are they are made for literally 24 hours. Um, so that's going to be a contemporaneous picture. That's like a digital trading card. Uh, so that is going to use that particular moment, not last year. Um, so, you know, just know where you're looking. Uh, cause if you're going to, if you're looking in the wrong place, you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to get a photo match. Great point. Uh, and those are five excellent tips. Uh, and with that, uh, we'll start wrapping up. Mike, it's been great to chat with you. Thanks for being such a great friend to the show and a superstar in the hobby. Absolutely, Josh. Um, I mean, thank you for, um, thank you for giving collectors like myself, like, uh, like Eric, like, um, like Chris, Jeff. Um, thanks for giving us the platform to just geek out about our stuff. <laughs> My pleasure, man. And I'm, and I'm absolutely elated to um, pass on the institutional knowledge and to uh, help make a very important video. Like I said before, we talk about photo matching all the time. We love it. Um, but in case somebody needs to hear what exactly is it and how do you do it and how do you get started, um, this is why we do what we do. Amazing. And uh, viewers, if you don't yet follow Mike on Instagram, definitely do that collector 0027. Uh, if you'd like to be featured on the show, shoot, uh, shoot me a message on Instagram. Uh, my handle is uh, Jersey's Josh and that'll do it for today. So please do hit the thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks everyone for watching and enjoy the hobby.